Welcome to the introductory video for Economic Analysis of the Law. My name is Professor Guy Pascal. And what I like to do uh, normally is I, I'm viewing this as the first day of class is to just give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in economics from Rutgers Camden, so you have an alumni teaching this class. I also have a master's degree in economics from Rutgers University in New Brunswick. I've been teaching at Rutgers Camden since 1993. And at the present time, I run my own consulting company. I do healthcare uh, consulting work as my primary vocation. So this is for the fall 2015. I realize that I do have on-site office hours in Armitage Hall, room 332. Right now, tentatively, they are set for the second and fourth Tuesday of every month between 4 and 6 p.m. Realize that this, is, when I say tentative, is that I've uh, submitted that as a time. Uh, as an adjunct faculty member, I share an office with a number of people, so there might be some scheduling issues, uh, so that might have to change. I will make an announcement on Sakai when I know that this is permanent. The textbook is Law and Economics by Cooter and Ulin from Pearson Publishing, the sixth edition. Make sure you pick this up because this is going to contain the bulwark or the most of the information that we are going to be using for the course. And realize that the purpose of this course is to give the use of economics and the theories and methodologies and economics and how they can be related to different areas of the law. We're going to take a look at property law, contract law, tort law, and criminal law. And the main thing to realize is that lawyers look at the law primarily as a redistributive mechanism. And using economics, we're going to be looking at it from an efficiency perspective. What is going to be the most efficient outcome that is possible? So that's going to be the fundamental difference for this course. So you're going to learn a little bit about the law, but you're going to learn about how to use economics in analyzing the law and the incentives that are in place with the law. Realize that we have three modules for the course. They run from week one to five, week six through ten, and eleven through fourteen, and there's an optional final exam in week fifteen. I'll go over the optional final exam in detail. Uh, at the end of those modules, weeks 5, 10, and 14, you're going to have an online test. And the weeks previous to that, you're going to have weekly assignments, forums, and quizzes that are due. They, these occur every week outside of the uh, test weeks of 5, 10, and 14. Also note that there are not forums every week. There are five during the semester. Your syllabus contains the information as to exactly what they're due, and they're also available on Sakai. So I want you to make sure that one of the things that you do is make sure you read the syllabus in detail. It outlines the policies and the procedures for the course. So be aware of that. Make sure you read it. Make sure you understand it. Excuse me. Um, oftentimes I get many questions from students that are answered on the syllabus. So make sure that if you have any questions, that you read through the syllabus and make sure it's not covered in the syllabus. Um, in general, I try to give students feedback within 48 hours. So when you're doing your homeworks, I try to get them back to you within 48 hours. Um, you can attempt the homework assignments once and the online assessments three times. For the online assessments, your highest grade counts towards the course, and the online assessments have a time limit of 20 minutes. For the tests, you can take them a maximum of three times with the highest grade counting to your grade for the course. Um, the forums are set up to try and align real-world issues with the concepts that are in the course, and I want everybody to understand what I do with the forums. I post notions on the forum. People should respond to them and realize it's an iterative process that if you post once and you get a grade, you can continue posting. Oftentimes, I will point out something in your post or I will question the validity of some of the things that you said in your post. 
and you can respond to that and increase your grade. You can respond to other people's posts. You can start your own conversation in a forum posting if you so desire. So make sure you realize that, that it's an iterative process with the forums. Um, don't get caught in the trap of thinking, I posted something and it's done. It's not done. If you post early enough in the week, you can get feedback from me or questions, or if you take a look at what your grade is for the forum and you would want more points, you can continue on and improve the, uh, the score on your forum. So make sure you spend the time on that and you keep up with it. Like I said, it's better if you post earlier in the week. That way you've got enough time to uh, make upwards adjustments to your grade. If you post something uh, on the night that it's due, 15 minutes before then, that's going to be the gr your form grade for the course. Uh, the grading distribution, 20% for homework assignments, 30% for online assessments, 40% for tests, and 10% for the forums. If you take a look at the syllabus, how grades are assigned, the criteria for that is on the syllabus. Also realize there's no such thing as extra credit for the course. I don't give extra credit for any of the courses that I've ever given. So your grade is based upon the work that you do in the class. Another thing that I want to point out to you, and I want you to be aware of this, is that this is a 470 level course. It's one of the more difficult courses that you can take here at Rutgers. So I want you to realize that ahead of time and plan accordingly. I'm not trying to scare people away from the course. The last time I taught this, I think some students were under the impression that it was an online course and therefore it was going to take very little effort. Don't get caught into that trap. There were a number of students who got caught up in that trap and had great difficulty with the course. Also realize that in the first week, or let me go once I get to the, uh, to the schedule itself, I'll, I'll hit that point. Deadlines, I expect you to meet your deadlines, and I, I want to explain why. I told you at the beginning I run my own business, and if I don't make deadlines, I lose contracts, I don't get paid. People who work for me might get laid off. So in my world, deadlines are very, very important. Missed deadlines mean lost money to me. So realize that, that that's something I hold quite dearly and I put a high value on is that people get their work done on time. Also realize that if you're having difficulties, an extension is possible. But I make a very clear distinction between people who request an extension prior to a deadline versus after a deadline. I'm sympathetic to deadline extensions that I receive prior to the deadline. And in general, all students, if you email me ahead of time, will get a one-day extension penalty-free. All right? If you email me after the fact, there is no penalty-free extension period. Your penalty starts accruing soon as you are late for putting your assignment in. So make sure you realize that, that if you're having issues, Email me ahead of time before it's due, and I will give you some latitude with that particular deadline. And make sure you read the syllabus. The syllabus clearly explains the policy for deadlines and the structure for late penalties. Make sure you understand that. Uh, the longer you take, the greater the penalty that, are, that accrues on your grade. So make sure you read the section. I believe it's on page 3 of the syllabus that explains that. Also realize that if you have a medical, a documented medical excuse, I can make special accommodations for you, but you're going to have to provide me with documentation. Simply telling me I'm too sick to get this done, you're going to have to back that up with medical documentation. For email correspondence, make sure you identify the course somewhere in the email, preferably in the heading of the email. I'm teaching three online classes this semester and I can't keep track of what students are where. So if you say I'm having a problem with this, it'll take me some time to figure that out. And that's a good idea. It's just good form, particularly once you get into the business world that you're very concise and complete 
so that, for example, if you email your boss, it, your boss doesn't have to take a lot of time figuring out what your particular issue is. So make sure that you clearly identify the class you're in and the heading, and also explain the issue that you're facing. All right, do not do something like, I don't understand chapter three. It's going to be difficult for me to help you out if you can't be more specific as to what you're having an issue with. So set, tell me, reference a particular figure, a particular concept. That way I can provide you with some level of assistance. Uh, make sure you read the disability statement and the statement on collaboration, i.e. the academic integrity portion of that. There are links embedded in the document that will allow you for example, if you need a special accommodation because of disability, who you can contact in order to get that special accommodation. And the statement on collaboration will tell you uh, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. One thing I want you to realize is that week number one, it has a test. This covers the microeconomic theory that you need to know for the course. If you have difficulty with this, you're going to have difficulty with the remainder of the course. So this is set up so that you can, if you have forgotten some of these microeconomic concepts, that you can spend the time and relearn them or beef up your understanding of it so you can do well in the remainder of the course. If you have difficulty with the, that, that initial section, it makes doing well in this course difficult. So make sure during week one that you spend the time. Don't just assume, oh, I took micro, I took intermediate micro, I know that stuff. Make sure you go through it in detail because, as I said, if you struggle with that, you're going to struggle with some of the concepts later on in the course. Also realize that the ending of the weeks are on Tuesdays. The reason why... I did this is because I didn't want to shorten that first week. We start on a Tuesday and have you done on Sunday. So I'd much rather you have a full week to get that information in and the, the review of microeconomic theory in and do well on it. So instead of just giving you five days, giving you the full seven days, and that Tuesday follows through for the remainder of the course. So just make sure you you realize that. All right, so week one is done on Tuesday, September 8th at 11.59 p.m., and then Tuesday nights are the uh, ending of the week every single time. Uh, the schedule is there. If you go to the next page on page four, there's the, an appendix which gives out a detailed schedule, lists out the weeks, gives you the dates and times that they open and the dates and times that they close, and it tells you what assignments are due that week. It also is mimicked on Sakai. There are individual buttons or tabs on the left-hand side for week one, two, three, et cetera, to give you some overview information about that, has the assignments that are there. So this appendix just mimics what's available uh, on, for the course. So make sure that you are comfortable with that. The schedule is there. There is no reason why you should tell me that you didn't know something was due. It's on the syllabus. It's on Sakai. And also, twice a week, I will send a to-do list saying this is what's due this week, and this is the deadline for submitting it. So you should be well aware of what is due uh, during any particular week. Also, I want another piece of information that on Sakai, I have loaded up some videos related to the figures, uh, the economic concepts, etc. So if you're having difficulty just reading through the book and looking at the figure, there are videos available on Sakai that walk you through step by step. I know sometimes some of the graphs in economics can be a little bit confusing because what you end up seeing is a graph is the end result of six different changes and trying to disentangle each one of them can be a bit difficult. So on the videos, it's, it walks you through step by step. So if, if six different things change in order, it goes through, here's where we start, first thing changes, now the second thing changes, now the third thing changes, etc. So you can see it build instead of just seeing the end product. Also, I'm trying to build up 
the video catalog for this course. I inherited this course from somebody else who developed the course, and I'm trying to add specific items onto it. So if there's a particular item in the textbook that you think a video would be helpful for you to understand or you think that it would be helpful for other students to understand, you can send that request to me. I will do my best to produce it. Just realize that if you request something on, you know, an hour before something's due, it's not going to get done. Give me enough lead time to put that together. I might not be able to get it done for that week, but you'll have a video available for when you're studying, for example, for the test. That, might, that would be available for you. Also, for the homework assignments, make sure you put the appropriate amount of effort into the homework assignments. Uh, last time I taught this, there were quite a few people who put very little effort into the homeworks. They would put one or two sentence answers. They wouldn't explain why they did something, etc. And what I can tell you is the best way to approach it is I would do the readings for the textbook in unison with doing the homework assignments. The homework assignments appear in the textbook. So as you're reading through, you'll get to a section where there's an assigned homework problem. So I would recommend that while you're reading, if you read through a section and then you hit the first homework assignment, start working on the homework assignment while the information's fresh. At least have a draft version available. And then read through again until you hit a homework assignment and then start working on that one. And then once you're done, go back and fix it up a little bit. Make sure you're explaining yourself appropriately. Uh, it's one thing I've noticed with students is a lot of people, a lot of students think that they're explaining something very well when they're not. So part of this is for you to critically look at what you're writing for the homework assignments and critically saying, could I do this better? Is this a good explanation? Maybe I should put an example here to help illustrate it. All right. So make sure that you follow that. That's when I talked to some of the students who took this class previously, they thought that this would be a good way to approach it, to read through until you may reach a homework assignment, start working on it and having it set up in a draft form, and then continue reading through the textbook until you hit another homework assignment and then answer that question. Once you've finished all the assignments, make sure you go back and reread them and make any adjustments that you think are necessary. All right, so make sure you do that and make sure you don't wait till the last minute to do the assignments. Uh, you know, I, I see the dates and times that people take quizzes and tests and the number of people who take a test, finish, and five minutes later start taking another one and then finish and then five minutes later start taking another one. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I guess you are just relying on random chance to give you the highest grade as possible. But realize you receive feedback. You can go back and study, go back and review items. After you finish the test, it should give you, Sakai should give you what you got right, what you got wrong, what's the correct answer, etc. So you can go back and spend some time studying. So especially with the tests, do not wait till the end. I usually recommend students when they're taking online tests, you get three chances at it. So you might as well take it early enough that you can get the feedback, spend some time studying, maybe review some material in the book and spend an hour or two studying and trying to evaluate yourself and then going back and taking it again. That's the best way to learn iteratively not just taking the test one right after the other. Also, Sakai has a function for online meetings. If, you, if there's difficulties with having an online class, if you want to meet online, I can, I'll do my best to do that. Remember that I am first and foremost a, an entrepreneur and a business person. I run my own business. So I will do my best to try and make special time available for people to have an online meeting. Um, you have to give me a, a good amount of notice. I, I can rearrange my schedule as possible to do that. Uh, you know, that's one of the downsides of having somebody who owns their own business teaching a course is that uh, there's not as much time available for that. The good part of it is you have somebody who's actually 
working in the field and doing this in an applied manner, and it gives you a little bit of a different perspective than somebody who's doing research and uh, just teaching. So there are positives and negatives to that. You have somebody on the applied side, but my time is a little more limited. Uh, as I said, I will do my best to try to make that arrangement. Also realize that that online function, I've only used it a few times. So if it, it seems like things aren't going too well, it's because, number one, I haven't used it in six months. So there might be a little bit of a period of relearning for me. So it might not go very smoothly at the beginning. So make sure, number one, you get the textbook on time. All right. I, don't, I expect people to start working right at the beginning of the course. All right. The syllabus is available on Sakai. It tells you what the book is, so make sure you have the book available to you when the semester starts. And uh, hopefully everybody will have an enjoyable time. You'll learn a few things about economic principles, especially with the, the application towards uh, the analysis of the law. And good luck this semester.